in this video compared to the last two videos it's time to recharge and I explained I'm going to add dye into the system the UV dye and recharge the system turn it on and we'll see how long it takes from the dye that is injected in the low side fitting before the compressor turn it on then the dye will have to flow from that point to the compressor go through the compressor mix up with the oil and refrigerant in the compressor be pumped out go through its journey through the condenser through several passes go down to receiver dryer inject it out the liquid line and then come to this point where we can actually witness how long it takes for the refrigerant to get up to this point and circulate through the system and i explained in more detail what it takes and in what scenario that you can actually witness how long it takes for the ref uh, refrigerant dye to go out the high side through the expansion valve of the evaporator and then down this path a slightly longer path but it barely adds any time only seconds all right so let's uh fill the system up i have the electronic scale zeroed out and there's a reason i use the navx scale because of how sensitive and how accurate it is and how reliable it is so that is the weight of my unit itself and it's zeroed back out this system takes 480 grams so by weight only so i will turn off the low side because i don't want refrigerant to go down the low side of the system let's focus and then i will turn off the vacuum source where it goes down the vacuum hose to the pump turn off the vacuum source now i left the high side open we will watch our scale zero it out let's get it over here where we can see it a little better oh and um the die is already in there so it's sitting there at that point and as you can see let me get my uv light you can see there's no there's no dye inside the sight glass. So let's open it up and weigh out 480 grams. One, two, three, go. So now the refrigerant is going in the system through the high side. The engine is off. You should never have to start up an engine. There's no reason to. And we'll stop right about yeah, that's good enough. 455. Okay. So let's close the high side. And you can see the liquid refrigerant right there inside the, the lens. So this is all filled with liquid refrigerant. Let's see if I move it. Can you see the liquid moving down there? Because that's where I injected it in high side. You see that movement down in the bottom of the lens? And there's no dye in the system because the refrigerant is filled in this liquid line is completely filled with a solid liquid column of refrigerant going backwards basically kind of stopping at the expansion valve a little bit flows through but it goes backwards through the sub cooling part of the condenser then it goes into the receiver dryer fills up part of that and then some of it goes into the condenser so we have the liquid side the high side is completely charged with liquid refrigerant right now there's no liquid refrigerant in the vapor side so now let's start up the system and we'll bring the light with me so as soon as we press the start button we hear the compressor kick in you can look up at the counter and see how many seconds it takes for the refrigerant to travel to that high side sight glass okay yes I agree Let's turn it on Flip. there it goes I just turned on compressor 1001 1002 1003 1004 1005 one. oh, it's already there that wasn't even five seconds okay so by the time I hit the button and I heard the engage of the compressor and I said that was there and I walked around and looked at the sight glass
So here's the situation. Look at all those bubbles. Lots and lots of bubbles. But wait, we have a fully charged air conditioning system. Why do we have so much bubbles? But the guys who fill up the AC with cans say you have to look for the bubbles. And bubbles tell you if you're full or you're not full. It'll clear up later. Okay, so I know this has a leak on it. But I just proved that all the switches and sensors are working. The compressor engages. There's no major abnormally like 300 or 400 PSI happening on the high side. There's no negative pressure or any extremely abnormally low side. And if I put my fingers and hands around when you get the no different systems, you get to know the temperatures. Uh, there's no nothing unusual. Uh, our dash, coming out the dash right now, the temperature, as you can see by the sensor I have, we're hitting 39 degrees right now. The air returning, as you can see right inside there, that's the sensor. And you see that hole right there? My sensor goes back another 12 inches, so I'm right on top of the filter, down where the blower motor wheel is located. So I'm getting the mixed air temperature. I'm not taking the temperature from one point. If I put the sensor and I bring it out here, I would be picking up just the air temperature over the engine and the radiator, and this might be 99, 100 degrees. So if I had my sensor sitting right here, I'd be picking up 99 or 100 degrees. Well, that would make my Delta T look really high, and it's not. The true temperature is, oh, there it goes, it's falling. Now that there's a lot more flow going over there, I'm getting into true temperature. So the outside is pretty cool out here. There's our true temperature. And here's our temperature coming out of the dash. See that 70 degrees was all the hot air that built up inside the crowl and everything, the first air being drawn in. Now it has flushed out that air. It's a cool morning. So we got 37 degrees coming out of the dash. We know we have a working system. And there's our um, high side has dropped. We know we reached our minimum temperature that the system calls for because the compressor is now cycling. There's no reason for me to have that on anymore. And the leak is not a massive leak. And what I mean by massive is that, you know, refrigerant or dye is shooting out from where that oil stain is. So now I can recover all the refrigerant. This is your next step. Inform the customer they need a condenser. But you didn't shortcut the diagnosis by just saying a condenser. You actually filled the system up 100% to the required amount of refrigerant to properly test the expansion valve and the compressor first before going to the customer and saying, hey, Mr. Customer, you need a condenser. You throw in a condenser and find out there's a burnt up compressor. Hey, Mr. Customer, we need another $2,000 because you need a compressor, flush out the lines, replace the expansion valve, flush out the evaporator, and you won't have a happy customer. So you have all the facts first before you go to your customer and before you say you completed your diagnosis. All right, I'll see you guys on the next one. I'll recover this refrigerant out of here and we will be on our way.